Tail of the tape for Bernard Hopkins versus Howard Eastman, or except, excuse me, for Jermaine Taylor versus Daniel Edward. I'm trying to skip one fight ahead in a hurry. Taylor is two years older than Edward at 26. Edward, incidentally, was a pretty good amateur fighter, winning 82 out of his 96 amateur bouts. But he gives up five inches in height to Taylor, a three-inch arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. They agreed to weigh in at 163 because both have had fights within the past 10 weeks. So they agreed to a three pound weight allowance in effect. Taylor is a half pound under it. Edward was one and a half pounds under it. Tonight unofficially, Taylor will weigh 170 and Edward 167. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Okay, listen up because these rules are different. The Jermaine Taylor, Daniel Edward fight is scheduled for 10 rounds, non-title, using the rules of the California State Athletic Commission. There is no three knockdown rule. The doctor or the referee can stop the fight. In case a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the score cuts at the start of the fourth round. And it can be saved by the bell of the 10th, the last 10th round only. Jim! All right, thank you very much. Daniel Edward was born in the United States but has Haitian citizenship as well because his parents are from Haiti. At one point, he thought of trying out for the Olympic team in Haiti as a 200 or 400 meter runner. So obviously, Larry, he's quite an athlete. He is, Jim. Uh, weighed 205 pounds when he was 15 years old. Now pared down to a uh, a serious, strong middleweight is a senior at Florida Atlantic University studying communications and biblical studies. Parents are both ministers with their own church. Serious guy who comes to fight. And he trains in the same gym in West Palm Beach quite frequently as 154-pound world titleist Kasim Uma, whom you saw on the undercard of the Arturo Gatti fight last month. Roy, he's been sparring with Uma. That's pretty good experience. That's very good ex experience because he has a sparring partner that will never, ever, 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 ever get tired. <laughs> <laughs> Edward himself has sparred as many as 50 or 60 rounds with Jermaine Taylor having prepared Taylor or helped to prepare him for at least three of his fights. Jermaine says of him, he's a great guy, he's a good friend, we'll still be friends after I beat him in the fight. And now here comes the pride of Little Rock, Arkansas, Jermaine Taylor. Since we saw Taylor a couple of months ago beat up on William Joppy, his wife, Erica, who is a star basketball player at Louisiana Tech, gave birth to their first child, a daughter. She's up for a degree in English, and he hopes she's going to be a number one draft pick. Roy Jones, he has a terrific jab, which he tries to throw as many as 40 times around. If he were to get a shot against Hopkins, would that jab give Bernard trouble? Yes, that jab could be a very effective weapon against Hopkins. In fact, that's the weapon I used against Hopkins way back in the day when I was uh, doing my thing. And I think a good jab is effective against any fighter. In his last fight, he thoroughly dominated former titleist William Joppy. Let's see if he gets some competition tonight. We go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Staples Center, Los Angeles, California. Tonight, Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions is proud to present an evening of world-class professional boxing for your entertainment. All bouts sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission and sponsored by Sportsbook.com and presented this first bout in association with DeBella Entertainment and Pelts Boxing. The three judges at ringside for this first contest will be Raul Caiz Sr., Marty Dankin, and Dr. Lou Moret. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Ray Corona. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a non-title contest between two undefeated middleweights scheduled for 10 rounds. And ladies and gentlemen, somebody's oh must go. Introducing first, Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red and blue. Official weight, 161 and one half pounds. Professional record, an excellent 16 victories, including nine by knockout with two bouts even. Originally from Haiti, now fighting out of West Palm Beach, Florida, the USBA middleweight champion, the undefeated Haitian sensation, 
Danielle Edouard. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing burgundy trimmed with black, official weight, 162 and one half pounds. A perfect professional record, consisting of 22 bouts, 22 victories, including 16 knockouts from Little Rock, Arkansas. The undefeated WBC Intercontinental Champion, Jermaine Bad Intentions Taylor. Go, gentlemen. My piece. Let's go, Jermaine. My piece. Straight. All right, this, good luck, this, this is good right here. Good luck. Good this luck, is good right man. here. I'm calling the shots, guys. Let's give a good, clean fight. Touch gloves. Touch hey, gloves. Joe. God bless. Jim, I don't know that Jermaine Taylor fully realizes how much this is an audition for a possible fight, the next fight for Bernard Hopkins, should he win later tonight. But that's exactly what it is. Well, if he doesn't realize it entirely, maybe that's good. Keep a little pressure off of him. In the meantime, watch out for Edward. In his last fight, he was matched as the opponent against a big puncher named William Gibbs. Got rocked in the first round, survived it, laughed last, knocking Gibbs out in the fourth. He can crack a little bit. Jermaine starts out working that jab. Yeah, but the good thing for Jermaine is he's seen this guy so many times already until it should be very difficult for him to catch Jermaine stepping early. What about the sparring partner mentality factor, Roy? Well, sometimes they get that mentality, but it all depends on how early it was, when they spar. He could have felt like he was on the same level as Jermaine and that Jermaine was giving him work. So we don't know the real situation there, you know? Taylor looks dry in there for the beginning of the first round. Edward lands a right hand over the top. Taylor says, hey, I want to fight. Comes back and fires two right hands of his own. Yeah, but when Taylor hit him, he yelled, woo, as though, wow, I've been hit by a man. And, and there's a left hand that backs Edward right out of his stance. They sparred 50 or 60 rounds, Jim, but never with small gloves <laughs> and how big a difference does it make Roy makes a lot of difference because then you don't you don't realize how hard a guy is truly punching until you fill in these small gloves with the headgear and the big gloves it's a little bit different you can take those right hands and they don't feel like that that's why when he felt that right hand from Jermaine Taylor just now he hollered woo that's something he's never <laughs> seen in that 50 rounds he's falling. he didn't know it feels like that Tasted it now and takes it a little better as Taylor lands another right hand and Edward comes back with a three-punch combination. There's the uppercut from Taylor. It was a big weapon in his last fight against Joppy. He takes a left hand and seems momentarily to wobble. Listen, you hear me listen. Let's go. His punches will seem different to Jermaine too now. Don't make no mistake about it. They're Absolutely. both fighting in small gloves. And he's already shown he has no respect for Taylor. At least he's not going to back off and show that sparring partner mentality. First time I believe I've seen a guy with red, one red shoe and one blue shoe. <laughs> Sensational. Befitting his nickname, the Haitian Sensation. He seems no, 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 no. He seems to have back. some idea of how he wants to attack Taylor. I'm not exactly sure how to describe it, uh, Roy. Uh, he's, he's not coming full bore. He's boxing him. Uh, wants to punch coming. with Taylor. And he wants to be rugged. He knows his thing is to try to knock Taylor out because Taylor is the guy with the experience. Ten Taylor is the true, spot, the, pros the true prospect here. And he knows Taylor, the longer the fight goes, the, longer, the better it is for Taylor. Stop. Round one, pretty high contact round. Both fighters landed some solid punches. A little better on your balance. Get control of that footwork a little bit better, okay? Your legs are a little bit all over the place. Let's, let's, let's control your legs, your, your, your balance. 
Stay low. When he gets close to you, drop down. And just keep banging him in there. Yes, all right? But don't let him come to you now. All right? You hurt him a couple of times with a jam. Yes, sir. You stun him. Don't let him get in his rhythm. Close your eyes. Take he sees Jermaine Taylor landing a beautiful hook right hand over the top. A left hook lead to follow by a straight right hand, which is a beautiful shot for Jermaine Taylor. Had he caught him on the end of the punch with the right hand, I think it would have been even more effective. Comedy box numbers in round one. Taylor 14 out of 37. Edward 12 out of 52. Taylor threw 14 jabs only and landed four. Throwing only 14 jabs is a far cry from what Taylor generally would most like to do, but Edward is staying close a lot of the time. I think that's the plan, uh, Jim, is to upset his rhythm, as you saw Bratsky, his no, trainer, no, no, no. say Stop. between go, rounds. Back. Not to just way, show way. him one go. look and give him a chance just to pump, pump that jab at him. The good thing about this is Edward is definitely rugged tonight, making a tough fight for Jermaine. He's not giving Jermaine his weight. And this is what you want to see out of Jermaine before you see him step up to fight a Bernard Hopkins. Break! Take a step back, gentlemen. All the way. There you go. Solid jab to the center of the chest. Some jabs flick out or snake out. Taylor has a thudding jab. Well, the thing about Edward is his biggest fight was an upset knockout victory, which is good for Taylor because Taylor goes the distance and it looks better because he's been had, having more fights going the distance. So he's definitely the experienced guy here. Stop. Stop. Go ahead. It's the back. Already in his career, Taylor has fought veterans like Raul Marquez, Alex Bonima, and of course in the last fight, Jockey. Right. These are guys who've been around and seen a lot. In Edward, as Roy points out, he's fighting a less experienced fighter than himself. And that right. hard right hand hey, hey, hey. Stock staggered Edward Stop. enough that Danny this felt the need to hold on. Go. Come on. Taylor had a perfect downward angle on the big right hand, and he feels like he's hurt Edward. I don't think Edward's legs are all there right now. Well, they're not all there, but he's not afraid. He's not intimidated by the big punch. And Taylor has to be careful because well, Edward is looking to counter every big shot. Yeah, but all Taylor has to do is, because he's a taller guy, is lead Edward into it. Great. Take a step back, gentlemen. You can see Edward's punch is starting to wear down a little bit already, so he has to lead him into a big shot. He just proves that he can hurt him. Now he has to be patient and hurt him again. How do you lead him into a big shot? Let him follow just like he's doing right now. Use the jab. Make him reach back. at you Come for on, a big shot, and that's guy. when you catch him. Get that jab right there. Oh, oh, good shot. Big left hook. Perfect shot with the left hook. Edward was looking for the jab. Taylor shot him with the left hook. There's a right, right hand straight into the mouth. Ten seconds, gentlemen. Stop at the bell. Edward's hands were all the way down to his waist for a moment. Taylor pounds him with another one, too. He's not Sweeping take, the right cross. He's not going to continue to take these right hands. Get off. Get off. Look. Yeah. Yeah. Get on the I know you're all right. Listen, what you're going to do this round, you'll make a dog fight out of him, all right? What you're going to do is you're going to get close. You understand? Put your head on the side of his chest. Just keep touching him. Okay. Don't let him step back. He steps back, you step with him. Okay. All right, you give him a little too much. He see Jermaine landing a beautiful jab right hand right on Edward's chin. I think that hurt Edward pretty bad right there. Then he came back and landed a lead left hook. Edward thought the jab was coming, and he leaned back and he walked right into a big left hook. Roy, if that right cross didn't hurt Edward, he's superhuman. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to imagine better leverage on the punch. CompuBox numbers in round two found Taylor throwing 26 jabs, twice as many as he threw in the first round, landing 16, and that set him up to land 27 out of 43 total punches. That's a statistically brilliant round. This is the fight I believe that Taylor was expecting Edward to try to jump right in, not give him any room. So Taylor moves back to create a little space, and Edward chases him to the ropes. Break! 
Take a step back. Stop Edwards marching. trainer Pete Brodsky said yesterday, Jermaine Taylor never wants to have his back on the ropes. It's our job to try to put him there. Good double left hand Stop by back. Taylor. Beautiful double left hand by Taylor. Downstairs then upstairs. I love that shot. Edward lands a left hook. And now lands another one. Taylor failed to get his right hand up no, no. in time. Edward chops Stop. across the top of the right hand. Taylor taking these shots pretty well. Edward has the right idea here. He has to get inside and make it rough because that's the only chance he has. If he stays outside, he's going to get caught with shots like that. Big shots. If he walks in like that, he's going to get caught oh, with uppercuts, as he did. Step back. Take a step back. No, no, I watch the and Taylor, against Joppy, landed the uppercut with either hand repeatedly throughout the fight. Jab, jab, jab by Taylor. He slips two punches and moves away. And again, the uppercut as Edward tries to walk stop, in. Stop boxing. Let go. Can't step back. One good step. There you go, gentlemen. Great. Stop boxing. How do you take away a man's uppercut, boy? Come in at an angle? You come in at an angle and put a jab on him before you come. Jab will make him have to defend himself some. Then you come behind him. Because if you just walk in and a guy's got a good uppercut, you're going to catch it every time. You're going to eat. You're going to eat leather. One, two, three. Left hook at the end of the combination. Edward is hurt again. Yeah, he wasn't ready for that one. Lead left hook, and Edward is wobbled. Come on, you got to get out of there. Stop the fight. Day, Bob. Referee Ray Corona didn't want to see Edward take any more punishment. And Roy, it was the lead left hook that set all of that up. Yep, caught him outside, hit him on the lead left hook, and hurt him really bad, and that was pretty much it. They're happy in Jermaine's corner. He didn't get the rough fight that uh, Roy Jones said he might have needed. But it was rough enough, though. It was rough enough. He fought a big, strong kid who was coming at him and, uh, and showed that uh, his nickname, Bad Intentions, had some meaning because he was throwing a lot of harder punches than we normally have seen him throw. Closing the show, Taylor landed by CompuBox count, 18 out of 28 power shots, 64%. You saw... If you uh, saw Daniel Edward in the foreground on your screen, he was protesting the stoppage to referee Ray Corona. And while Corona didn't waste a whole lot of time stopping the fight, Edward was getting hit yeah, big time. Here you see him land the one-two again, which he landed consistently. He came back with a hook that time, and that hook pretty much dazed Edward. But I think the one-two did the damage because that right hand right there was right on the chin. The hook was just a follow-up shot. At this point, he was hurt, so Jermaine just put the pressure on. Missed him with a right hand, missed him with another one. There was a good left hook that caught him high on the head, another right hook that caught him. And the referee had seen enough. There was a left uppercut. He was only taking punishment at this point, and it was time to stop it because he was not going to punch back. You got to try to throw back in those situations when you're pinned on the ropes or in the corner. Especially when the guy's in the big punches like that. Those look like they're, death, they're life threatening punches when, you, when the fans are screaming behind every one of them. You're not punching back. You seem helpless. The referee had to do his job and stop the fight. Good stoppage. Very good stoppage. And once again, you see that guys like this, his experience level is not that of Jermaine's ta Jermaine Taylor's. Yep. So he was starting to wear at this point in the fight. So Taylor stretches his record to 23 and 0 with 17 knockouts. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the particulars. Referee Ray Corona steps in and calls a halt to this contest. The official time, 2 minutes 26 seconds of round number 3. The winner by TKO victory and still undefeated, the pride of Little Rock, Arkansas, Jermaine. Bad intentions, Taylor.